welcome to this tutorial on deconvoluting bulk RNA-seq data into cell proportions. This tutorial was built beautifully by Mehmet Tekman, and the reality is the tutorial itself contains all of the scientific information you're going to need to know. I'm Wendy Bacon, I am from the Open University, and I'm going to be taking you through the tutorial. Really, just in case you're having any issues following it or getting the tools to run, this video is kind of your guide to go with it. But like I said, for any of the scientific content or explanations, you're just going to want to read the tutorial. Or indeed, if you just need some moral support to get you through, I can help with that too. All right. And if you have any questions, please do get in touch using the different chat forums. Galaxy is really great at answering them. So. Uh, well, just so you know, I'm going to be doing it on the human cell atlas use galaxy.eu instance. That's what I'm used to. Any galaxy.eu instance should work just fine. Onwards we go. Right, so we're going to use the human cell atlas use galaxy.eu instance. And I'm going to use the tutorial view, and that's using this button. Uh, and you'll come down to transcriptomics and then all the way down to uh, bulk RNA deconvolution with music. And this is going to be hugely valuable, particularly if you're not doing this in 2022, uh, but still using the video, because it means you're going to be able to use the correct tools to make the whole tutorial run, right? Because tools get updated all the time. Okay, onwards and upwards. So there's a beautiful, if I say so myself, description uh, within this section. So please do read it. But like I said, that's not the purpose of this video. This video is to help you get through the clicking and finding all the parameters and making sure it works. So we're going to start with creating a new history and saving it. It's always good. Often forget that. All right. And we're going to get our data. And then I think they also wanted some. Yeah. So then we also get our single cell RNA seq data. Now I'm going to cheat throughout this whole process and things are going to go a lot faster for me because I'm going to cut out all the waiting time for you all right so don't get concerned if you're if a tool is taking a lot longer for you than it does for me I'm using the magic of pre-recording also this is quite risky to try and name them whilst they're still sort of gray or even orange uh, because sometimes it will sort of error out and then you'll have to rename it anyway so I'm playing fast and loose and we're back and uh, everything's uploaded, so that's good. We've got them, yep, they've got their tags, so that's good. I told some important information about the data sets, so we can now investigate them. Oh, you can look in the little window here if you want, or you can view the data. So this is the phenotype for the single cell RNA data. So you have what's probably the well number, but basically the cell ID. Um, and then it tells you the subject. So these are non type two diabetes. So there's probably some type two diabetes in there. And then here you have all of the different cell types. And I must say, I appreciate their unclassified endocrine. I appreciate the honesty when they're annotating their cells because sometimes you just don't know. Um, all right, that's cool. And that's a little bit different to the um, bulk phenotypic data. All right, so these subjects feature your samples for the bulk data, information about the sample, age, BMI, the all important HbA1c factor, gender, and then tissue, probably all of them are pancreatic eyelids, but I don't know. Right, and then we can also look at the actual experimental data. So here you have the cell ID across the top for the single cell data set, and then the genes, all gene symbols along the side. And then in the bulk data set, you have the same thing with gene symbols, but now you have the subjects or the people across the top to so the bulk samples. Well, cool. Onward we go. So yes, go through all of these. That's good for you. You should do that. Always look into your data, otherwise the next steps make no sense. This is going to be important later when they're looking for HbA1c levels, because we can consider anything above 6.5%, they have type 2 diabetes. So that's going to be quite helpful when we're sorting our samples later. Ugh, the expression set. I hate this about single cell data. It's always like, let's make a new type of matrix, mega matrix that stores all this data. <sighs> Surat object, mandata object, now expression set objects, and monocle has its own object. 
stop it. Sure. Construct expression set. And again, this is why we use the tutorial version. So I can just click this button. <gasps> what? I don't know why that happened, but if it happens to you, just click it again. That's what we've learned. All right. So we want assay data. So that's the expression data. Then we want phenotype data. And this is really cool because it's going to carry our tags through, which will be super duper helpful. And I always like to cheat, so I'm just going to rerun it. Phenotype, phenotype, cool. I suppose at the beginning of this, I could probably have just deleted this bit and made it just like healthy expression or something. Anyway, fine. All right, and that's all set. So now we can inspect it. Oh yeah, don't do that. I just that just downloads it. Don't do what I just did. That's bad. We will inspect it properly. Inspect. Oh, nice. So sometimes I've had issues with having to click and drag. Um, so this seems okay. Cool. So we're gonna inspect for is it general info? Ah, we want featured data table of the SCRNA. My guess is we're going to do both of them, aren't we? Ah, and then we'll inspect the dimension too. Okay. Okay, so the first one's done. Yeah, you might need to do this. Uh, it depends. Um, so we should see a list of gene names because it's the F data, the feature data. And yes, that is what we see a massive list of gene names. Cool. And then the dimensions. Ah, so this is genes by samples, or in this case, because it's the single cell stuff, it's by cell. Cool. All right. Okay, let's move along. Let's estimate some cell type proportions. Why should the single cell RNA seq data set contain both? Oh, and then maybe a weird extra cell type. Hmm. Let's run music. Single cell data set, SCRNA, bulk, purpose. I guess we're estimating proportions. We could untick this if we wanted, but for the purposes of this tutorial, we won't. Sample ID. Here we go. These are the cell. Oh, sorry. These are the cell types that we want. We don't want any phenotypic factors. We want to exclude these. So when they're looking for what's making the proportions of cells, we don't want it to take into account sample ID or subject name. Show proportions of a disease factor. Yes. Cell target. We're going to put beta. So 6.5, that's the number that we're dealing with. Um, this doesn't actually have to be from the, I mean, ideally your single cell data set has some disease cells in it, but in this case, this is just going to define it in the graph. Anything that is that hits this criteria of HbA1c 6.5 in the bulk is going to then have the T2D defining it. Doesn't actually have anything to do with your single cell data set. Okay. Sometimes you will want to do this, otherwise the axes become quite misleading. Woo, all done through the magic of television. Um, and then we can look at all these lovely results. Like I said, you can remove this uh, in the tool parameters if you want. Ooh, the two different algorithms pick up different levels of cells. Kill surprise. Um, all right, and then here's cool because you see the triangles, anything that had above 6.5, you can see it here as well. Anything above 6.5 was now gets a triangle and we're calling it T2D. But again, you could have put anything there. Um, and what's cool about this is within the beta cells where we would expect in a diabetes patient that you would have fewer of those beta cells. We see that anything with the high HbA1c in the bulk samples also has fewer beta cells. And that's cool because it tells us that our deconvolution is it works. This method works 
to a degree. This is another neat way of visualizing it. So you can see that you're kind of picking up these four different cell types within the samples. You can see the variability across the samples. So like this had very few alpha and beta cells and a lot more uh, ACE and R and ductal cells, whereas like this maybe had loads of alpha. So you can see the sort of inter-sample variation, which could be very, very helpful. To be fair, even more helpful if this was organized by disease versus non-disease, but here we are. Goals for the future. Cool, that was exciting. And here's where it explains it and interprets it for you. Pretty good, pretty good. Ooh, this is the, I like this bit. I like it when stats are made for me. You know what I'm saying? I don't have to calculate it myself. Oh, this is cool. I haven't even looked at this. <sighs> Very cool. Uh, anyway, yeah, so this is a log of music fitting. All right, I'm going to have to zoom out for this, otherwise it looks insane. Uh, yeah, so you can see basically there's stars by gender and HbA1c and also intercept, which means they're interacting. Um, but the point is, yeah, these things all are factors. We know that they're all factors. We know that they're inter interacting. It's a whole thing. But HbA1c and male gender in particular are impacting the proportion of beta cells and in, G in general, the different proportions. Cool. So we've made it to the halfway point of this bulk RNA deconvolution with music, which means it's time for a cute dog break. Take it away, Ziggs. Aren't you the most adorable dog that ever existed? This is the best dog in the world. Come pick up your toy. <laughs> Look, it's a bear dog with a bear. Right, second part. New history. Like what? I've done this tutorial quite a few times. At no point did I actually catch make new history. <laughs> so here we are. That's my poor data management. Importing some files. The old import some files. Oh, keep forgetting them here. And then the single cell. in a maverick kind of right in the tag before it goes orange because if it changes color whilst you're doing this it all goes to hell and then you have to redo the tag making anyway i'm impatient so i'm going for it and we're there okay now what are we doing <clears throat> we can explore the data sets as before tell me about yourself single cell rna seek so yeah this looks more like droplet-based experiments. Those are your barcodes, which mice they came from, and indeed their cell type. Cool, cool, cool. Expression pretty much the same. Yeah, stock 17, you're in everything. Um, and then here, there's way fewer bulk samples. So now we have these APOL ones versus the control, which is not particularly important in this particular tutorial, but it may be in the future. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. So we have all that, let's do some stuff. We'll construct our expression set objects again. The good old E set, expression, phenotype. So easy to get that wrong. Oh, I think this is my favorite tutorial for why tags are important. Because it's like, they're not all that important until you start actually analyzing your own data. But at this, it's crucial for not mixing them up. All right, I'm gonna be honest that this one took a long time. Okay, so don't be surprised if it takes the single cell one takes an awfully long time. Okay, we constructed, we can look at them if we wanted. Meh. Let's go for it. So we're doing the second half where this isn't going to just randomly make the groups. We're going to give it some information. We're going to do it in sort of stages and then also give it some information. So Things all RNA seq data set, yes. Bulk data set, yes. But this time we're going to compute a dendrogram so we can sort of do the first round of cluster grouping. All right. And this is the list we want because now these are the single cell types that we have in the sample. We don't know our cluster groups yet, so we're just going to go for it. Oh, it's done. Oh, and now we can look at the dendrogram. Cool. So we'll focus on uh, this side. <laughs> so yeah, 
the one of the questions is where if we use this cutoff where we can see that these are grouped and these are grouped and then these are their own sort of things if we were to cut it right there that's going to be the next section okay cool, cool, cool. so yes yeah, so let's do that next section if that was our granularity how many would we have so we're going to use that and then we're also going to uh use this known information. So if we have a list of known epithelial markers and immune markers, that's gonna help us in a supervised way uh, identify the cell types. So it'll still go through and use the best genes. Woo! So now we're gonna run it again, but I'm not gonna click that button. Why? Because I already had to input a whole bunch of stuff. So I'm just gonna rerun this one, okay? But we are now going to insert some cluster groups. We've got C1, C2, C3. So we're calling them. All right. And how do we call them? So then C1, it should be the neutrophils. Uh, and then in C2, to be honest, I don't even know that cell type. But that's the best bit about bioinformatics. You don't need to. And there were a whole bunch in this C3 group. And oh, just scroll if that happens to you. Okay. There are a whole bunch in this C3 group. Okay. But we do, we can break down some of these epithelial markers. Okay. All right. Oh. I'm gonna have to do it all again. Don't. And again, these genes can distinguish the immune cells. Well, let me hit go. Home stretch now, chums. Cool. So now you can see that within each bulk sample, it's giving you the cell proportions. And we can look at some PDF plots. Uh, so now we have all of this jazz, right? So that's all the same. Um, but now we can look within each sample. The, basically, there's loads of that cell type. Um, but you can sort of see it uh, differences across the different phenotypes. Most of these are at zero. so. Yeah, cool. Ta-da! Conclusion! We've made it, folks. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, yes, check the FAQ page or indeed the GTN Gitter page, or if you're uh, here during the Smorgasbord or whatever wonderful, fantastic Galaxy Conference you're in, you can use those chat forums as well. All right, cheerio.